here you're ready for your dose of reality. important one, Mr. Mayhem, and there better be a good reason you called me down here on my day off. Oh, there is a good reason. Today, you, you won't believe it or not, but we actually got some mail. We actually got some letters from some of the viewers that, of this podcast. I don't know why we brought me down here to, to read the mail, because it's all about you guys just love the important one and you can't stand Dr. Quack because you think he's boring. But let's go ahead and read a few letters so I can, I can feel good, I can feel great, I can feel wonderful. Thank you. What about Bob? Well, there, you know, that lack of ego, if that ever goes away there, if he ever manages to gain that, he'll be okay. But I want to let you know something first. As you can see right behind me, right here, we have the Quackies coming up here, January 5th. And if you don't know about the Quackies, the Quackies is simply this. It's our award show for all of wrestling today you'll get to vote on such things as the most popular the most hated the most overrated the most popular will be the important one mr mayhem so you can just go ahead and write that one in now you hear the man himself make sure you go click on the facebook page titled the quackies there you'll see the big golden duck folks we do want to hear from you on this one because while we are the hosts of the award show the quackies this is your time to vote all right, your vote counts here. Now, on to the mail. Let me read the first one here. here. What do we got here? Because we got a, got a few of them here I pulled out. This one's from George in Arizona. My name is George, and I'm 14 years old. I, real, I really enjoy the banter between two, the two of you. Mayhem is really funny, and he keeps me laughing. I do have a question. Who are your most favorite and least favorite wrestlers of all time? George, thank you. You're obviously a kid of talent. I can't wait to see when you become an adult what great things you do for the society. There's one out there. There's more than one. <laughs> so since you took the time to read it, why don't you go ahead and answer it first. Who are your most and least favorite wrestlers? Well, my most favorite wrestlers, you know, they're, they're the ones that really you know, influenced my career. And, and that would probably be uh, Mick Foley was a big influence in my career because I always looked at him like the guy who could take everything and still keep going. And, and the other one was definitely one of my favorites. That was Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit was, was definitely an influence to me. Um, just his work ethic, you know, the, the way he worked in the ring as a technician was definitely one of my favorites. How about you? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Hold on. My least, least favorite. favorite. Yeah, you want to know my least favorite? Sorry, I'm going to take shots here. Let's go, Cowboy. Yeah, um, probably my least favorite wrestler to watch was Goldberg. And I'll call him Oldberg if you've seen him previous podcasts because it, it's just two minutes and out. You know, I know it was why he always said, what's next? Because he couldn't stop working at 7-Eleven and waiting on the next customer to come up. Yeah, that was my rage, though. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm going to give you three of my favorite wrestlers. My all-time favorite wrestler on the national circuit, on the regional circuit, and somebody I really enjoyed to wrestle. So for the national circuit, while I am a huge Chris Benoit fan, my favorite was Arn Anderson. Double tough, no nonsense. He didn't need to flash you to death and, and do all these weird moves and, and jump off the ropes. He just beat people up and people loved it. So Arn Anderson... Now, again, I've told you many times, I'm a big fan of the Pacific Northwest. Rip the Crippler Oliver. Look him up from the 70s and 80s. He led a group called The Clan that had people in it like Tom Billington, had Mean Mike Miller, had the grappler Len Denton, the dirty white boy Len Denton. Uh, he's had a lot of big names come in and out of his, his stable, so Rip Oliver. And then the opponent I enjoyed working the most, Bobby Too Bad. Here in, here in, here in the Houston area, 
Bobby Tubag was my favorite opponent. My least favorites were agreement on Goldberg. <laughs> Sorry, I almost called him Gold something else. So um, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Of I've never been a Goldberg fan. I enjoyed him even less when he pretended he had a shoulder injury and held out for more money. So him, Jeff Jarrett, who I just never bought his shtick. I never thought he was all that entertaining or interesting. And then Bacharella, Sasha Banks. Those are my least favorite wrestlers. Let me give a shout out to Sean Dempsey. I know you're watching this somewhere, but you were definitely the toughest opponent I ever fought. Let me move on here. Well, no, you, you read the first one. I'm the host of the show. I should be reading the next question. Oh, go right ahead. All right, so this is from Don in Texas. Hey, Don from Texas. Hello, Dr. Quack. My name is Don. Can you make that, hey, <laughs> can you make that guy the Quack Don? That is uncalled for. Show some respect. I've tried, Don. I've tried. I hope so. <laughs> Boy, he just rubs it in. Anyway, I'm glad he wrote that. Anyway, you like horror movies, so I would like to know what is your favorite movie that involves wrestlers and hopefully horror as well? You want me to take this one? Or you want to take this one? Uh, Come on, right, Mr. I'll go, Host. I'll go first. Go ahead, Mr. Host. I'll go first. I'm still upset at Don. Don actually <laughs> insulted the important one. That's right. You better hope I don't find you. Don, you're all right in my book. All right. So my favorite wrestling movies, I've got two, and it's The Longest Yard, the Adam Sandler version. Well, I'm not a big fan of Adam Sandler. He did this remake pretty good credit, and it had a lot of wrestlers in there, uh, the aforementioned Goldberg, amongst others, and I think it was actually a really good movie involving wrestlers. I'm, I, I'm trying to stay away from the Rock movies. Yes, Rock is very talented, trying to stay with somebody who's right now considered a wrestler. And the other one is The Running Man, the Arnold Schwarzenegger classic. That one had Professor Toru Tanaka as Sub-Zero. Very good, very underrated movie written by, Steve, by Stephen King, although he used his pen name Richard Bachman. That one, and then I'm going to give you a couple of least favorite Don't forget movies. Jesse Ventura. And, and Jesse, yes. Uh, my two least favorite, Santa with Muscles. <laughs> That is on the top 50 worst movies of all time list, pretty much universally. And the other one, while it's become a cult classic, I don't like it, and it's too hokey for me, Hell Comes to Frogtown. <laughs> How do you not like Hell Comes to Frogtown? I mean, that was Rowdy Piper in his finest. Yeah, macking on a puppet frog. No. It was still funny. It was great. But I'll tell you mine now here. So here's my favorite wrestler movies. First one was The Condemned. Steve Austin, probably my favorite one out of all his movies. I mean, I really love that movie there. Um, great on the... Uh... <laughs> Our guard dogs have a little fun down here. But great, great on the action, I really felt. And the other one, Body Slam. Now check that out in the 80s. That also had Rowdy Piper in it. Um, and King Tonga over there, otherwise known as Ming. Um, probably my least favorite wrestling movie. Sorry, Hunter. The Chaperone sucked. I've never seen it, and from what I read the day it came out, I didn't want to. Yes. You are not an actor, sir. There or Blade 3, please. You know, you suck. But as far as horror movies goes, of course you know I am a livid and very excited Freddy Krueger fan, so I love all my Nightmare on Elm Streets. But my other favorite horror movie franchise, probably Sleepaway Camp. I always felt like that one there really was underrated and a great cult classic. All right, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of horror. I leave that to this guy who obviously looks like a horror poster. That's right. Look, look, look at that right there. Just, That's just ugly. You know, down with the clowns. That's right. Well, oh, go ahead, clown. Read the next one. <laughs> all right, so here we go. From Samantha in Georgia, I would like to know what you two think is, is the most overrated and most underrated wrestler of any time period. That's a very good, very interesting question. I know you you read it, so you go ahead and go first, uh, but that, that's a very thought-provoking question. Thank uh, you. God. You know, and this is coming straight off, you know, the dome here. So, probably the, the most overrated wrestler of all time. God, it's a lot of them. You know, I would like to say Goldberg. I've already said his name, but he's definitely in that category. Um, I feel like Roman Reigns is definitely one of these ones that's overrated. I feel like, 
with, without either somebody being his manager or him being in a group, I don't feel like he's the man. He's the big dog. I, I don't feel that. I'm sorry. I just do not. And, and the WWE crowd for about five years felt the same way as you did. I still do. You know, the most underrated wrestler, I mean, there's a lot of those, too, that I could really think of. I mean, hmm, who do I put on there? Probably most underrated to me is Matt Bourne. Matt Bourne, I don't feel like got enough credit, especially in the E, when he was heel doink the clown. I mean, they could have pushed that gimmick a little bit better, but... You know, I felt like him, he, he did not get enough credit as far as the world of wrestling goes. He could have been a, you know, Intercontinental Champion, if you really pushed it right, maybe a world, but I would say at least Intercontinental Champion. I, I forgot about Matt Bourne. I would definitely agree with you of being underrated. My overrated, Goldberg, Sasha Banks, already mentioned, let's move on. The other one I put on my list, Lex Luger. Ah, the total package. The total package who just couldn't get right and just couldn't deliver. You know, the worst matches he had of all time were the matches that he was supposed to look strongest in. So definitely overrated in that category. Physique does not mean talent. My most underrated wrestlers, the two I chose, were two people who kind of been forgotten by wrestling history because well, either injury from a car accident or an early death They've kind of been forgotten, and I would have liked to have seen where they came out in the world of wrestling, and that's Magnum T.A. and David Von Erich. Another two. Magnum T.A.'s career got cut short because of a car accident. He was supposed to win a world title within the next year. Who knows how many times world champion he would have been. Same with David Von Erich. He, he died of a uh, uh, stomach infection while well, he was over in Israel, I believe is where it was. Or no, excuse me, he was in Japan. Yes. He was in Japan when he passed away. He was supposed to win the world title in like two weeks. So, and he would have also going to be a, a multi-world time champion. So my underrated are those two guys because we didn't get to find out what they had to offer. All right, and I guess I'm going to take the last one here. And it's from Jason in Oklahoma. All right. Jason, Jason says, I would like to get into wrestling. Can you give me any advice on becoming a pro wrestler? That, that, that's a big question. I'm going to say, first of all, if you're not already exercising, getting in shape, and I don't just mean lifting weights. That includes cardio. The biggest thing in wrestling is cardio and flexibility. So don't be afraid to take a ballet class or take a ballet. yoga class. Who took ballet? Flexibility and endurance. Well, you heard that from the important one over here. Ricky Starr from the 1960s was a ballet dancer and he's a well-recognized wrestler for his ballet skills. But other than that, go into wrestling as a sponge with ears. Absorb everything you can, listen to everything you can, don't come in thinking you already know something. You don't know what gimmick you're going to be, you don't know what moves you want to be, you don't know what finisher you're going to do. You don't know what your name is going to be. Be a sponge and listen. What do you got? Yeah. I mean, I'm with him on that. Listen. That is such a big thing that has been told throughout the shoot interviews on this podcast. And, you know, e even right here by the important one here. I mean, listen is such a big factor. Also, a big thing is don't burn your bridges. I've learned this a lot. Now, unless you're Jim Cornette, who doesn't burn bridges, he demolishes them. You, you want to make sure you, you listen to the promoters, listen to the bookers, listen to the guys that are important in back. There's no such thing as my spot, but there is seniority and veterans back there. You know, you want to show respect consistently. That is something that is really lost in this business, I feel like. Yes, I know we were kind of making jokes and disrespecting, I guess, a little bit by overrated, underrated. But it's just our opinions, so you take them for what they are. If I was in a wrestling locker room and Goldberg walked up to me, I would still shake his hand. I would still call him sir. Yes. It's called, you know, respect the profession. Well, we want to thank all of you. Please, more. We would like to see more mailbag coming in. So please, send in those questions. We'll be willing to answer them. You heard, we're not afraid to go into any topic. We're not afraid to touch anything. We're, nothing's off limits to us. So send your questions in to the, to the Dr. Quack podcast and send in for your quackies. Yeah, and don't forget, 
Check out the Quackies on Facebook. Make sure you're there to vote because voting ends January 2nd, and we will have our show on January 5th. I'm the host, the important one, Mr. Mayhem. And I'm Dr. Quack, and I'm out.